people are craving this now and they're and they don't necessarily know where to turn but i know that you know as a collective it is time for us to answer that question like how and to build the platforms and because it's not always going to be one-on-one -on -one counsel or coaching but how can we build the communities and the platforms that are are ready right that have cultivated this inside themselves that they're ready to really really be compassionate without judgment and and receiving people to that degree mm -hmm. how did how did you land with intimacy being the focus all right where do i start so you know i remember when i was dialing in more and more about you know we always go through that why question or dialing or in our business and our focus and every time i went to unpack what I do, how I do, no matter what the modality was of, of how I got there, the end result was always intimacy. Hmm. The end result was, and again, not romantic relationship, but real intimacy is being seen, being honest, being authentic. And it kept coming back to that intimacy and connection. Hmm. And, and that's really how easy it was. Just every question I asked myself, it was, oh, intimacy, intimacy. It wasn't relationships. It was, it, it was intimacy. And I was like, wow, how can I, and the question I asked myself is, how can I reach people in that terminology when they think it means something else? Mm -hmm. So that's become my mission is to veer away from that traditional relationship and just get people into feeling intimately connected with life. You know, I, I say that, you know, existence itself, like an intimate relationship with existence itself. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a big concept for some, but I'll give a simple terminology is, you know, I was out walking yesterday. So windy. It was like Chicago winds here in Vancouver. And I was out walking on the sea and I went into the forest and I was so present and aware to the wind touching really strongly against my skin, to the leaves falling on the ground, to the rain trickling and the sounds on, on the trees. And so to me, that's also intimacy. It's like intimacy with existence, with everything that's around us in the morning and in, in the, in our day. Hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I um, want to get into the yeah. chapter. Do you have something else you want to add? No, no, no. I, I just love love hearing where where you come from is. It's just great, and it reminds me so much of that evening that we had in Vancouver, just talking and being able to share our work and um, and share the experiences that we've had. It's it's just so lovely what you're what you're putting out in the world. Yeah. All right. So on page seventy seven, that's that's where I was like, flip, 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 flip into that. And like, it was underlining all these things. And, um, and yes, like the first sentence is your relationship, your sexuality is like a dance. And, um, and I love that learning to trust yourself is a part of this. Like that's, that's true and beautiful and, and not intuitive to everybody also. We have so much that teaches us and allows us to, to disconnect um, that it, it really is a lot more of a teaching skill that I've had to do with clients um, and people that I work with more than I anticipated. And even in the past 10 years, I think has changed um, to be even more so. There's so much more distraction from that and less practice. So I loved it that you started it with that. That was great. Can you share maybe if you're if you'd like a little bit on when you're working with your clients, and again that important topic that we're talking about is really connecting to our creating our own relationship to our sexuality. And I know for me, my journey, I chose celibacy for seven years to to, to dive into that relationship. I can be an extremist. <laughs> I own that. <laughs> I don't expect you to be celibate for seven years. But I'm curious if you have a simple, even something you can share with the audience today of something that you use as a way to get people to build that relationship when they're first starting. Mm -hmm. And it, it depends on where where they are starting and what their experience is. But for some, I start, especially if they if they come to me and they're and they're very much in their head. 
um, then I meet them where they are so that it's not as scary and and they have more of a comfort level. So for someone like that, I typically will start with their history. And you do that in this book too, about where does your sexuality come from? And, and I have that be a very heady examination that feels safer and it's still very valuable information. And I always do it as a part of the self-examination, but it depends on when and where it is, uh, depends on the person. Um, and for others, I, I do a form of sensate therapy that's to yourself that I ask them over and over again, what do you like? What do you want? And have it be as non-sexual, um, stereotypically non-sexual as possible. And do like, is it, you know, as I know, you know, with a tantric view of touch and do air and water and fire and earth and see what those things mean. And I had them do it like if they want to be on their sternum or if they want to be on their hand. And I keep asking over and over again, what to, what do you like? Try different rhythms, try different firmness of touch, um, different places with oil, without oil, and just learn what that's like to be present. And I ask lots of questions of what were you wearing? Where were you? What were the sounds like? What did you do to prepare yourself for this? Did you jump into it? And I see what is, do they have a conscious practice to begin with? Um, or is it just like just is it is is the biggest thing to even do it and 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 from what how they answer that is where we go if they don't have a jumping in point then i help them create a ritual which i know you have in the book too about having a ritual with that um if it just feels like comfortable touching themselves in a non-sexual way then we focus on that and what that means and where is that where is that coming from and what's the benefit of it um and and see see it, but once, once you get that part in, which I found is like we're, we're ultimately heading to that thing in the middle. Uh, it, it almost doesn't matter where, what road we begin in. Um, and I like to find the pathways to all the different roads, too, to get us there um, and to say that's, that's the interesting part of it. And I love it that you said curious because that's something that I say over and over again to my clients. Let's be curious. Or when they answer, I'm like, how cool is that? Like, I like this touch and not this touch. Awesome. Isn't that great? Isn't that great to know that about yourself? And they're like, what? <laughs> like, who cares that I like it this way? I'm like, I do. And, and I want you to. And, um, and it matters. And, and having, I, I, one of my favorite moments when working with somebody is when they shift from like, huh, to me to, I get it. I get it. This is great. This is so great. Like I just had a client write me about an hour ago and sent me something that she had found that she'd been researching and asked if I would read it. And it was actually a podcast, but I listened to it. And I was like, yes, like this is so fantastic that you are caring now and, and that you're interested in this. And, um, and I, I love teaching curious learners and I, I love telling them that this is, that's where this all begins and ends is curiosity into yourself and valuing your answers. Thank you. I love to a couple of things I picked out in that is I love the celebratory, you know, cause it's interesting. So many of us, right. We're raised not to celebrate these parts of ourselves and more so to criticize ourselves or to have a lower self worth that what we like or our own pleasure isn't, important and i love hearing you um, encourage the celebration by you celebrating them i think that's so beautiful and so important and i'm curious because one of the things when i unpack and do the question like self-inquiry is i always find that through self-inquiry if people are still enough in asking the questions over and over and over again, is what gets triggered is a feeling response in the body. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, I'm curious from your work and, you know, hearing you with asking them those and giving them those inquiries and taking them through that. Do you find as well as that feeling response gets stimulated? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, and for some it's, it's helping them understand that that's what's happening inside of them, that that feels interesting and different to them. Um, and for others, it's just, let's put words to it. And let's thank, thank this response for those that, that are informing us and, and um, to see And for some, it's just like, okay, great. Now we know and we can move on and not make more of it. And for others, it's like, that's, this is telling us something important. 
and and let's really pay attention to this and see what this means or it's telling us something important let's see what comes next uh, let's see what's a part of the process um, and um, and just be so grateful that you're tuning into this and so, some of my work and I know this is, is for you too is is helping them keep the faith that this journey is um, is going to help enrich their lives and their communication and their connection with others.